Hello and welcome to another Mansfield Matters podcast. This is the show for the fans, by the fans. Why? Well, because Mansfield Matters. Coming up in this special show, we're going to take a trip back in time as we took a trip down memory lane with five former Stags players and met up for Legends Live with three Stags heroes. We're going to bring you some of the best bits, some of the best stories from those episodes, all for your enjoyment. Here's a little taster of what's to come. I'm waiting for dodge it. Right there. I think he just went, yeah, quite right. <laughs> up, up, up I went. And uh, let's just say, I told him what I thought. I can't remember. It might have turned into a bit of a, a bigger, bigger with, with the other player. I think I might have said something. That's all I'm owning up to. I might have said something to Dodger. I'm not owning up to anything else. The next day, we're doing shape on the main pitch. I've gone over to take a corner. The rest of the team's in the box. I'm at the corner flag. And he went, Mickey, I watched your DVD last night. Some brilliant goals on there. And I was just like, the rest of the team were like, <laughs> like what? And I was just like, oh my God. He still didn't play me up front, so <laughs> Club sent me to a surgeon that they'd used a lot and the players nicknamed him the butcher because all he wanted to do was just cut you up like whether you had anything wrong or not he just wanted to cut you so he did that with me three players you'd most like to invite around for dinner Bab because he can pay for it he's had the best career probably Hammy because he might bring his wife and she's quite attractive <laughs> do you know that the video of this is going on YouTube so your missus will see this yeah no Hammy uh, well firstly my missus knows that I think Hammy's wife's attractive but secondly everybody knows that Hammy's batting above his average <laughs> Please do bear in mind that this episode contains strong language and stories which may not be appropriate for some younger viewers or listeners. It's quite, it's quite funny. I've, no, I've never actually told anyone this story before, so I, I actually, <laughs> like, I, I'd say to him, I'm a centre forward. Like, I've played at a lot higher level than this. I'm, you know, I've, I can score goals. Like, you know, put me up top with uh, Richie. Um, and he'd be like, you know, the thing. I ended up, t- <laughs> ended up taking him. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, a, you know, a bit embarrassed about this, but I ended up taking him a um, DVD of goals in. Which <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was pretty, pretty embarrassing. It's like, I like giving him, as soon as I'd given him, I was like, oh, God. So the next day we're doing shape on the main pitch. Um, I've gone over to take a corner. So the rest of the team's in the box. I'm at the corner flag. And he went, Mickey, I watched your DVD last night. <laughs> Some brilliant goals on there. And I was just like, <laughs> the rest of the team were like, <laughs> like <laughs> what? And I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. He still didn't play me up front, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I yeah, basically played that whole season on the left wing, yeah. which I, you know, being, when you're left footed, you, you you know you do tend to get thrown out on that left side, mm. uh, but it, it was something. It's almost though. a force of habit. Oh, he's a left natural left footer, so he's got yeah. a bit of pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it happened to me again at Barnsley. I'd I'd, um, I'd been at Grimsby. I was top goal scorer at Christmas. Barnsley signed me. It was good, John Thordson, and he 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 like wanted to talk to me. So Grimsby said, "Yeah, you can go and talk to him." And he was like saying, "I'm going to play you on the left." And I was like, "What?" And he's like, and I was like, no. I'll... And he was like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to play you up front. I'm going to play you up front. As soon as I signed, boom, straight onto the wing. Yeah. yeah. And it was, uh, and then it was only, then uh, Good John got sacked after like three games. Paul Hart came in, who also played me on the wing. Mm. And then he eventually put me back up front. Yeah. And so then he actually, he actually apologised <laughs> to me for playing me on the wing. Mm. Because I say to him, I'm a centre forward, I'm a centre forward, and he'd go, you're not centre forward. How much hammer did you get from the lads when after that training I think they were a bit confused. Mm. They were, I think they were a bit confused about, like, has, he's not, he can't have. <laughs> it's like, uh, but, um, it yeah, I was just, yeah. Yeah. DVDs, yeah. DVDs had only just come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would have been quite funny if it were VHS, and then uh, yeah, you, yeah. your girlfriend or your missus had taped changing rooms over halfway through, and he said, it was a lovely episode of changing rooms. What they did yeah. with that two-by, that four, yeah. that uh, two-up-two-down. Extreme makeover. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so like obviously we lost uh, we lost Richie at the end of that season as well. But I think I think if we could have, um, I think if we could have slightly strengthened the squad, you know, in a, in a couple of areas, I think you know we'd have been completely fine. <laughs> That's actually since been moved from the from the Bishop Street to in front of the D and Greaves stand as it is now. Block D. Uh, block D, where Simon sits. Which shouldn't be a block D. <laughs> so uh, we're playing Cheltenham at home, and obviously you know what uh, Steve Evans and Paul Rayner are like on the touch line. Um, they're giving it a bit of verbals, and Gary Johnson's probably about as bad. So after the game, Gary Johnson does an interview with uh, his, his media team and, and says, they should, it doesn't matter about what's going on on the pitch, it doesn't matter about all that, they should put a camera on Steve Evans and his mate Dodgy. And ever since then, and since they obviously did the dirt in us and, and jumped ship to Peterborough, we've not referred to Paul Rayner as, as Paul Rayner, we've referred to him as Dodgy, or Dodgy, his mate ever Dodgy, since. ever yeah. since. Hang on. That's so, what I say, hang on. So you can't do that, can you? To if, Stags, so that's no. it. If, if, if you'd have said dodgy, you'd have had double points, but there you go. Right. Uh, I still think that's all right. I think six in, in a total time of one minute 42 is uh, very respectable. Right, okay. Uh, so there you go. Let's move on very quickly and uh, uh, move away from that. Let's uh, go back from that. Let's, in fact, whilst we're on the subject, we might as well start with that story. Back in your playing days, red cards. Shouldn't have been a red card, should it, to be fair? Um, I know uh, Parky wasn't happy with it. Was Parky was the gaffer at the time, wasn't it? <laughs> Talk us through it. It was, it was Paul Ray. Well, I'd, I'd got five bookings at the time, so it was my last game before my suspension kicked in, played Cambridge away. And uh, to be fair, Dodgy was, uh, was, a good lower league, was a good lower league player. You know, he'd come through the ranks at Forest and uh, he, was, he was a good lower league player. Anyway, uh, balls played up to him. I foul him, and he's a foul, it's not a bad foul, it's, it's just a foul, but uh, Dodgy uh, starts rolling about on the floor, it, it's in front of their dugout, so their dugout all, all uh, go up, and uh, unbelievably for me, straight red, off you go, so I turn around and Rainers. Uh, winning in uh, dodgy, he's winning in Oscar on the floor. He's he's having a roll round, and uh, off I go, walk off. Unbeknown to me at the time, when I'm walking off, apparently dodgy sees me being sent off and has a little smile on his face, which Parky saw. So anyway, in the dressing room, I remember if I, if I'm being honest, Parky comes in at half time and. It, it, kind of words along the line of, right, okay, don't matter about the result, I want Rainer Dodgy doing, I want someone doing, don't worry about a fine, I want him doing. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting up the corner like feeling sorry for myself. Huh? And uh, anyway, I, th I, can't, I can't remember the score, I think we lost. Uh, nothing happens to Dodgy. So I end up with a six six game suspension, which I think t kind of tied into some dodgy weather as well, which lasted quite quite a long time. Not that long, uh, uh, not that long in the future. We play Cambridge again, obviously at Field Mill, and I, I'm sore because, to be fair to the lads, uh, was there uh, Scotty Eustace, Brian Kilclay, they done well, they done well. So I return and I'm sitting on the bench, play Cambridge, and uh, again Dodgy's playing, and uh, I think he gets took off not long before the end, and literally, you know, I think in the old days the fourth official stood up. A board up, not an electronic thing, just whatever it was. Come up with whatever, two or three. And I got up and Parky said to me, where are you going? And I went, I'm off up the tunnel, like that. And he went, why? And I said, I'm, I'm waiting for Dodgy, like that. And he, Parky just went, yeah, quite right. <laughs> off, off, off I went. And uh, finally whistle went and Dodgy was first up, up the tunnel. So let's just say, I told him what I thought, and I uh, can't remember. It might have turned into a bit of a, a bigger, bigger with, with the other player. I think I might have said something, 
that's all I'm owning up to. I might have said something to Dodgy, I'm not owning up to anything else. Uh, and, and turned around and disappeared into the dressing room, unbeknown to me. I think then it kind of kicked off in the tunnel with the, the players. Uh, and then everyone comes in, Skip, what are you doing? What are you doing, Skip? What, what, what do you mean? I've uh, been a bit of a. Uh, uh, changing of opinions or discussion, you know. An exchange. Like, I'm not saying the exchange of views, yeah. yeah. So, you know, might have been the odd, what, whatever. I, I didn't know, I know I just kind of started it. Yeah, you've lit the fire, haven't you? You've lit the fire, haven't you? turned into an affair, yeah. Those, again, the good old days got changed and we used to go into the, the bar at the end of the corridor, the where the sport as well. Yeah. But obviously, I have to go past Parky's room. So, go up, knock on Parky's door. Gaffer, gaffer. So, sorry about uh, so, sorry about earlier. It was Roy McFarlane, was the Cambridge manager. And my first pre-season there, Roy Alp King in pre-season, so I, I kind of knew Roy a little bit. And Roy went, big man, was it you that started that? And I come in, yeah, Roy, yeah, yeah, it was, I'm sorry, I, I apologise like that. It was funny, and Roy just come up to me, I think, oh no, right, and he just shook my hand, and he's going, I'm glad someone's done that, I'll be waiting for someone to do that to me <laughs> all season <laughs> oh, um, So, uh, yeah, but he was a good player at that level, you've got to say he was a good player. And I remember, I played for Warsaw, and we played Preston away, and... and it gave me a torrid afternoon that day, Ryan. He played up for me, give me a bit of a torrid afternoon. And I did all right for Warsaw, and it's funny, in the, all the Warsaw fanzines, it said uh, Stuart Watkins used to take them. Played like Bobby Moore up until Christmas, played like Demi Moore at Preston. This was against, this was against Raider. So he's giving me a torrid afternoon, and a couple of minutes to go, I thought, I'm having you. I'm having you. The ball was played into the corner, over the top, and I'm thinking, you're getting it. I am smashing you, <laughs> like that. And I went flying in, and honestly, it just, Meg me, called it. I went disappearing into the the, the sideboards or the advertising audience or whatever, and he just put it through my legs and ran away laughing. Rain. So I wasn't his biggest fan to start before before the Cambridge incident, if you like. But uh, no, he was he was a good player at that at that standard. He was a good player. And then Billy did. Followed Peter Sherman. Yeah. What was your relationship like with Billy? Because we've got we've had contrasting oh, reports on the Dylan yeah. situation. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I, I know it sounds a bit repetitive. But it's it's not the case with every manager at Stags, but no, we'll I, get to that. I, we will get to that. I really liked Billy Dearden. He sort of was like a granddad figure for everyone. Like we saw this. <laughs> we had that I mean, he used to fall over when he used to cross the ball. Uh, yeah, but he was <laughs> so he was so funny. I remember it. Because obviously I wasn't, he was manager at Stags previously before he yes. came back, wasn't he? Mm. And I wasn't there for that um, that time. And I remember seeing this old man walk in and say, I'm your new manager. And I was thinking, he, he can't manage our football club. But <laughs> Someone just let him out to take care of him, man. Cool, but, man. Yeah, but um, I really liked him. He didn't do much of the coaching. Mm. He left that to Dutch and, and whoever else was there. But he picked the team. He was really good sort of motivator. He reminded me of Kevin Keegan in, in a way, because Kevin Keegan as a coach was pretty useless, but as a motivator to get you up for games, like you would you would die for him, like you would literally do everything you could like for the cause. Um, and Billy Dearden, when he took over that time, he definitely had the sort of new manager effect because I remember, he, I think he ended up signing Barry Conlon. Yeah, we lost Barker to Hartlepool. Yeah. And then, and then he signed, I think, Conlon and Grits. And Grits, yeah. yeah. And we had five or six games where those two were unplayable. Like, neither of them had much pace, but they were big target men. We could bang the ball up to them. Um, and, yeah, Billy did and definitely sort of got the good vibe back, uh, which we needed. Um, and Conlon and, and Grits, they did really well for us. They, they both scored both scored a lot of goals. Conlon was useless at training, but, but <laughs> he scored um, he scored some goals for us. But Billy Dearden, he was a really, really nice guy. And he was another one who, when he lost his job, like, I, just, I felt like I was losing a family member in a way. Because mm -hmm. um, he, he believed in me, he believed in in uh, what we were trying to do um, at the time. 
he wanted us to play nice football, but he also understood that it's not always possible, especially when we've got Grits and Barry Conlon up front, two big, big men at times. We'd have to go long to them, get them to win the headers and, and so on. So he, he, was a good, he was a good football man. He understood football. He wasn't just, although he was old for manager, he wasn't set in his ways. He, he, could, he could adapt. Um, and I think Dutch, Paul Holland, really helped him out at the time, sort of with the coaching side coaching side of things so I did really get on with him like I was I was disappointed because um, he obviously lost his job just before just before we got relegated and and I, I suffered my injury like when he was when he was a gaffer is it true that he drove you up to the northeast somewhere to have a scan or something or yeah yeah he did he did yeah yeah I forgot Billy about did that. In this is, yeah, yeah Billy did and because um, I had what happened with my injury um, I I had a scan initially in Sheffield and the club sent me to a surgeon that they'd used a lot and the players nicknamed him the butcher because all he wanted to do was just cut you up like whether you had anything <laughs> wrong or not he just wanted to cut you so he did that with me I had my first operation in Chef he cut my ankle uh, open Sheffield not a chef's Sorry. kitchen by the way yeah, yeah. <laughs> just on the butcher thing and put <laughs> it with a <laughs> meat yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it? And then he come out with, with a bit of stick. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. He took me to Sheffield and he opened up my ankle and he assessed the damage and he just did nothing. He literally left it and said, put it in a boot for three months, then start doing rehab and it should be healed. So we did that. Three months went by, did my rehab and then the pre-season, the following pre-season, I tried to do training and I literally couldn't run. I said, this ankle feels no better than when I did the injury. Um, so the physio we had at the time, he um, he said, I know someone. Can you remember the, who the physio yeah, was? Yeah, it was Barry Stephen. Um, because he, he was, I think he was, he only, he was only the physio for two or three weeks or months because he'd Paul, been there a long, yeah, long, he'd been long there time, a while. Yeah. But the physio we had, Paul Maiden, I think he was on holiday or something. Um, and Barry was like, listen, I know someone up in North Allerton, which was miles away. Um, who can give you a second opinion? Billy did and insisted himself on driving me there, taking me for the scan. Um, and the surgeon there, he said he cannot believe that the surgeon in Sheffield didn't actually repair the damage because the ligament was the ligaments were damaged beyond repair, like they wouldn't just heal themselves. So um, he said, "What I need? It's like a, quite a pioneering thing at the time. They put two screws either side of your ankle, and a." Uh, a metal wire goes through your ankle, through the bone, and it, it acts as an artificial ligament. Um, and he said it needs repairing. Like, I can tell you now, that will not heal itself. There's so no way. So when you go to an airport, do you beep when you well, go through the Well, I don't, because yeah. apparently the, the density or something of the metal isn't enough to set off the, set off the <laughs> things. Uh, but if they, they do tell you, if it does happen, you just need to tell them what procedure you had. Um, so yeah, Billy David took me for the scan, he took me for the operation, and like I said, that meant so much to me. Mm. That did mean so much to me because he, he was, like, he went above and beyond. He went above and beyond um, what he actually needed to do as a manager. So that was brilliant, that was brilliant. It's great to hear, isn't it, that he's doing that, but just, I've got this picture in my mind now. Yeah. Every, right, <laughs> you know where, it's probably know where it's going. Everyone that's talked about Billy Dayton has described him as a granddad figure. Yeah. Please tell me he has some sort of granddad type tapes in his car and a packet <laughs> of Werther's Originals. So that's going to ruin the illusion. Do you know what? The whole time I was in the car, he was on the phone to his wife. Like, and I think it was a two hour journey. They were just talking like through the day. Oh, he was just bless. talking about the scene. So it was you nice. Fall asleep, well, no, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> fall asleep. But, um, and I think on the way back, he just put on a, a, a well, I say, a Did he wear his flat cap? Yeah, he, he, the flat cap was on, flat cap was on. Um, but yeah, he was such a nice guy and he was a, a granddad figure. And I think when he did, when he did tell us all that they've, they've sacked him, he was genuinely upset. Like he, he wanted to keep us up. His, his mission that season was to keep us in the division. Um, and yeah, the damage was already done, but he didn't, he didn't really get the chance to, to see that through. Keith came in, did he, did he do a good job? I thought he got lucky that he, he fell on good people that recruited him, good young players that went on and did really well for the club, got him promoted. That year we got promoted. If he'd invested some money, I think would have actually kicked on. Uh, and they may have established himself as a League One and potentially getting into... Ch they had a team there 
a core young team that could have got in the championship. Yeah, let's touch upon that promotion winning season a little bit more. Obviously, it started off with Billy Dearden in charge and then left for, for Notts County. Yeah. What was the dressing room like when Billy left? Because it's a sim very similar situation to ours this year in terms of Steve Evans leaving for Peterborough and then another manager coming in, although we brought him from outside rather than recruiting from within, which we all said we should have done. But what was it, what's it like as a player when a manager who comes in has built a squad then decides to leave for a rival? Uh, well, with Billy, most of us cried because we absolutely loved him. As I said, he was a fa father figure. We didn't see anything. I think we played Leicester. I'm sure it was Leicester we lost to. Yeah, yeah. And he told us the, the day after, and we were flying out to Portugal on the Monday. Uh, and he told us after the game, it came as a real shock. I mean, Stuart taking over out because obviously he'd been the youth team manager to a lot of players, so he was just taking us forward. Um, so it was a real shock. Wherever they went, it didn't really matter to me and the players. We were just gutted that we were losing someone that we would run through a brick wall for. Uh, I ain't so sure the, the modern day Mansfield players would, would cry when Steve Evans left. They're probably joyful. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Have you ever come across Steve Evans in your career? I've played against his teams probably once or twice in pre season. Um, Obviously, I know what he's like. I've got a lot of mates that have played for him, so I've heard a lot of stories about him and the way he works. But one thing you can't argue, he gets things promoted. Yeah, it certainly does. I mean, I have to ask because I think there'll be a lot of people screaming at me if I don't ask the question without naming names. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what he was like as a manager from what other people within the game have said? From He's just very within? intense uh, from what I'm told and obviously you see him on the sideline and that's probably how he is within the, the dressing room with the players. Um, one of my best friends in football played for him and uh, though they got promoted twice underneath him, uh, I know they weren't very keen on him. Um, being correct there, I don't want to say too much on him but the one thing you can't deny is he gets teams promoted and I can understand why uh, managers go and appoint him if they want a quick fix in terms of getting teams promoted, which he does and you can't argue with that. Uh, he does spend a lot of money than getting teams promoted but at the end of the day he gets them promoted. Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, I think we'd all... When he, when he came did. in, we was a little bit like... His character's got a little bit of history to it, but we've all said exactly the same as Bobby, didn't we? You know, he's had promotions and we would have killed, would have killed for that. I mean, what do you th go on, Nick? I was to say, like, let's not pretend as well. When he was here, ninety-five percent of the, the the fan base did actually love him because when he's on your team and he's getting them playing the way you want them to and showing his passion, then you do love him. But I think the way he abandoned us, we, the way he did when we were so close, he gave us that hope when we're so close to actually getting the promotion, I think that's the bit where the bit of the character that people always questioned about him and the fact that he just was very, so easy just to get up and leave like that and leave us in a, in a mess that he did I think that's the problem and that's where the opposite fans tried to warn us really didn't they yeah. and I think that's just uh, Steve Evans for you isn't it it's, it's a bit selfish character in that sense but when he's on your team you sort of love him it's a difficult one Bobby, you played under four managers at the club, if, I'm right, if I've done my maths right. It's a good job, Cam. So I can remember. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go backwards. Uh, Curl, Watkiss, did, and, and then it would have been King? And Steve Parkin. Steve Parkin. And Andy, and Andy King, King, yeah. Fantastic. So, obviously, I think we can pretty much guess who you would say is, is the one you didn't get on with the most in terms of Keith Curl. But he did get us up there and towards the playoffs. So, what sort of. It must have started off. All right. What went wrong? Uh, well, he, no, it started off terrible. It actually finished. Well, relegation, okay. yeah. Well, no, it started off terrible with his relationship with players, and I think because of that start, it was very hard to then get that relationship back with him because uh, trust is a big thing in football, and the players didn't trust him uh, initially. Um, and then it was very difficult to get that trust back. But it was still a good team, the still core was there that got promoted the two seasons before. Still young lads coming through together. So we, we, we were used to each other by then. Uh, but Keith came in and wanted to throw the whip at it. You know, for example, when he first came in, he said if anyone wants to come and leave, he was getting the right out, come and see me. Well, we, we all went straight to him. Which backfired on him, and then he. Do you think that was a sort of a bit of a move? Say, I'm the boss now. You know, you've had it. You've had your yeah, mate looking, for a no, couple no of years. Yeah, looking now in the football or... as I do now. Yeah, 
<laughs> but when you're a kid, you don't understand that. You think it's personal. Yeah, and well, well I'm fine, then we'll leave. Because we had many, lots of clubs after us. Uh, and then obviously we, we got relegated and he had to change his tack the second year, which he did to be fair to him. But by then I think my, people have made their minds up on him. Uh, so yeah, that's does how that, the relationship that, was with him. Does that come from being a rookie manager and sort of perhaps not knowing how to approach it or do you just think that's his, his general character? Because obviously he's well, gone, sure, on, yeah, gone yeah, on from sure there. He's changed. I'm yeah. sure he's changed over the years and he's just trying different things. He would have been probably spoken to like that by his managers. The chairman, the chairman paid for us to have a, a lovely hotel, if you can get a lovely hotel in Skegness. Um, a night, can't go wrong, job done on the seafront, happy days. And the, 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 one, the one funny thing that sticks in my mind was um, we, we, we played a thing called the golf ball game, where obviously the lads have got a pint, uh, if a golf ball lands in your drink, um, you have to knock the pint back. Um, so I've tried to do the manager's thing, the lads have been on it for a couple of hours by this time, we've, we've gone into the, the, the lobby of the bar and um, John, like the good chairman he is, he said, like, what, what's happening? I've just said, look, John, don't get involved with the lads, just, just yeah, let's stay out, you know. No, 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 he said, what, what game are we playing? I said, well, look, it's golf ball lands in your drink. I'll have a pint, he says, puts a pint, plop, the ball lands in his, his, his drink. So, um, knocks his pint back, like, like any good chairman. Then says, I've, I've got the ball, I'll have another pint. Got, everyone forgot to tell him there was two balls, so another one dropped in his pie. <laughs> I, think, I think come the end of that night, that's the first time I've seen sort of John Radford legless. Um, I told him just not to get involved with the, the players in their games, but it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting night, let's put it that way. Let's put Adam Murray on the spot now. He had a bit of a glint in your eye when Paul was uh, recording that story, as if to say, oh yeah, I remember that, I remember waking up in that bin. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we had a few. Good night. Um, like I say, that team spirit that we had uh, over them, them years was, was fantastic, and that one in particular was um, eventful. I think yeah, we had everything. We had fights in McDonald's. We had uh, <laughs> cheeseburgers flying everywhere. Um, chairman was had a good night. <laughs> uh, we all had a good night. To be fair, it was we had we had Mickey Moore who don't drink the most like. <laughs> You couldn't make it up, so Mickey don't drink. So I, I remember talking to the gaffer at the bar and talking football. And we both look over our shoulder, and there's Mickey in his blazer, probably a little bit too big for him, in the middle of the dance floor, absolutely going for it, like he's had about 20 pints. <laughs> we were like, he don't drink. So it was, um, yeah, it was a good night. Any others that you can sort of uh, recall? I think probably one of the most eventful ones will be after it was all signed, sealed and delivered, obviously a big, probably about a week's worth of night outs after we won promotion. Yeah, that was, again, it was strange. I think there was, that actual night, I know the lads did, but me personally, and I don't think the gaffer did that night, we didn't really celebrate, did we? We were that tired and that relieved, and I think the Tuesday night at Hereford had took that much out of us. We didn't really do anything that night. Um, on the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, after that. <laughs> I was, was going to say, there was a period after that, it was three or four days, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we made up for it, but on that Saturday, we were absolutely bollocks. <laughs> Shear is my hero, so um, to stand alongside him, both of us wearing the number nine shirt was, um, and the joke is that I'm only allowed one piece of mem memorabilia in my house, and it's that team sheet. It's the only thing my wife will allow for me to have on the wall, and it's on the wall in a frame. To be fair, she bought the photo that's alongside it, which was me and Shearer. But um, out of all the things that I've done, that is the only piece of memory. All my trophies, they're in the whip, they're in the loft, they're gone. But she only allows me one thing, and that's the team sheet from that game. And I constantly, you know, when, when um, Shearer's on TV now, you know, for my kids, I, you know, they, they look at that team sheet and I, I tell them how proud I was to, to, to lead the team out that day. So that is one thing that will, will stay with me forever, that. Let's go to the exit then, talk right, us through yeah. the, the start. The right, so, when did you get sort of whispers that Kazan um, might be trying to get rid? Um, well, there was no transfer window then. So uh, I remember receiving a telephone call one day uh, from um, Chris Turner, who was director of football. I, actually, firstly, just before that, about an hour before that, I received a phone call from, I'm not quite sure who it was, but whoever was the manager of Notts County at the time, and said, would you be interested in coming to Notts County? 
and um, I said no. I can't remember who the manager was. But the answer was no. Um, and then uh, and then I got a phone call uh, from Chris Turner, who was director of football at Hartlepool, to say, would you be interested in coming to Hartlepool? And I said, no, I'm fine, thanks. I'm, and I just signed a new three-year contract with the club. Uh, I'd got a year left. I approached the chairman at the time and said, you know, and I don't mind admitting this, I didn't want to play for another football club again. I just stayed here until I was, you know, until he was, you know, kicking me out the door. So I said, look, I, I'll, I'll stay for as long as you want me to stay. So I signed a new three-year deal. And then um, one, one day in October, uh, I was, we must have been a day off. I was sat having lunch with my wife, um, just in a cafe somewhere. And Peter Shirtliff rang and I picked the phone. I said to her, hold on a minute, the gaffer's ringing. And he said, he sat down and said, yeah, I am, yeah, funny enough, I'm having my lunch. And he said, um, uh, we've sold you. And I said, what? He said, um, we've sold you. And I said, well, you haven't, because I ain't going anywhere. He said, mate, you are, you, you, you've got to go. So I said, no, I'm, I'm not going. And like my wife's looking at me as if to go, oh, what's happening here? And so I came off the phone, she said, what was that about? I said, oh, they've sold me. She went, sold you? I said, yeah, yeah, to Hartlepool. And she said, well, I ain't moving. So, <laughs> and to be fair, she had a justified reason. Our little girl had just started nursery. My son had just started primary school and our oldest daughter had just started secondary school. So, you know, understandable. So um, anyway, they'd sort of accepted a bid and this was in October. And then um, uh, I basically, and I don't mind admitting this either, I asked for wages I knew they couldn't pay. Because then they'd just say, I just said, well, if you don't pay me that, I'm not coming knowing full well that they couldn't pay it. If you could choose between the following, would you take a hat-trick, one hat-trick, or would you take never leaving? You said earlier that you wanted a hat-trick in a match ball. Uh, probably never leaving, because yeah. if I'd have stayed here, I'd have scored a hat-trick. Oh, <laughs> Now, um, a couple for you. Um, two people you'd hate to be stuck in a hotel lift with from your stag's time. From the stag's time. Wow. Well, where is Aslan now? He's not here, is he? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to announce he is coming out for the second half. So, any questions ready? No, he's not. Don't worry. Um, well, I'd have to say him because he sold me. So, you know, I'd have to say him because um, you know I don't want to make any enemies here, but. Um, you know, he only came down to one person and he was one of them, so... Um, <laughs> uh, so he, he, he'd be one of the people in the lift. And then, um, Alex Neal, because I travelled with him for a little bit when he first came. By the way, what a great job he's done as well in terms of, you know, managing the Premiership for, a, for an angry little Scotsman he was. But God, he was hard work to share a car with. <laughs> Three players you'd most like to invite round for dinner? Those who've been to uh, Bap, because he can pay for it. <laughs> he's had the best career. Uh, uh, probably Hammy, because he might bring his wife and she's quite attractive. <laughs> Do you know that the video of this is going on YouTube, so your Hammy, missus will see this? Yeah, no, Hammy, uh, well, firstly, my missus knows that I think Hammy's wife's attractive. <laughs> Secondly, everybody knows that Hammy's batting above his averages. <laughs>
we'll do it tonight. He needs doing tonight. I've just had a bit of toast. Well, we can't do it. So they took me in bed. They took me up onto the ward. They took me in bed with my kit on, Mansfield Town kit on. <laughs> shin pads, no boots. Shin pads, mud, yeah. <laughs> mud on my legs and I left me in bed until the next morning. Next morning, they came, uh, took me down to the theatre. Kit still on. <laughs> <laughs> took me down to the theatre, operated. I came back from the theatre about four hours it took. Came back, uh, I couldn't feel my hand. So they came to do my observation. I said, I can't feel my hand. So he says, fetch doctor, we have to take me back down. I had to take me back down. Another three and a half hours, because of trauma inside, you had to leave it open, leave my arm open. Yeah. Uh, and what it were, they'd stapled it for it to bleed inside. They, they left it open and uh, they got elastic bands going across like that. And every other day, they were taking me up and down to theatre to tighten elastic bands to get my arm back together. And after a week, it, it wouldn't go back together. It couldn't get the skin back together. So I had to have a skin graft off me, off my thigh. They transferred me to Park Hill. Is it Park Hill? I had to watch Nottingham. Park Hospital yeah. out there. About nine o'clock on a Thursday night, uh, the surgeon came to see me. He says, I'll have you down as quick as I can. An infant has come to see me. Uh, he says, right, we're ready for you. They took me down into this small room before you operate in the theatre. It's like full of nurses and everything. And he's just come through, he went, surgeons just said, Mr. Perks has just said, if we haven't got enough skin, good skin on your leg, can we take some off your cock? <laughs> so I looked at him, I went, I looked, and it's full of nurses and women, I'm thinking, Captain of Mansfield Town. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, there's loads on there. <laughs> <laughs> Next minute, poof, I'm out. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm back in my room. Nurse comes doing me observations. She went, oh, I'll just check your wound. But I'm half asleep by that. She pulled the sheet back. I got blood all around there. I went, you're fucking joking. <laughs> she went, where's that come from? I went, I ain't got a clue. It had blood. There to make it look as though he took it off my cock. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is a gospel truth, that. <laughs> oh, surgeons have a sense oh, of humour. Honestly, honestly, I absolutely shit myself. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching and listening. This has been the show for the fans, by the fans. Why? Well, because Mansfield matters. We'll be taking a trip down memory lane with some more former Stags players very, very soon. Keep an eye on our website for more details. The place to be is www.mtfcmatters.co.uk. We'll also be bringing you a brand new Legends Live Night very, very soon indeed. For now, though, make sure you join us every Thursday at 6.30ish on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash mtfcmatters. Join in the conversation and follow the journey every single week. I'm Craig Priest. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. <laughs>